God bless you, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to online service of Life Purpose Church. Here, what we do, we search God's heart through the scriptures, and we want to say a, fa a very special thank you for everyone for allowing me and Adali to allow us to welcome you in our homes, in your home. And we'll just continue to grow and to, to seek God and just continue to allow Jesus to be the savior of, of our life. And before we get into updates and announcement, let's go ahead and go into the word of prayer. My loving Heavenly Father, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, that you always continue to give that grace and that strength. You continue to give us endurance and, and always give us the ability to keep our faith and even in hard times. Father, as we get ready to to continue this journey, for, you know, to, to grow in your word. And, and I've always a, a appreciation, a very special thank you to the Luna family. Thank you, Father, for everything you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, everyone, I just wanted to share that, you know, going to the high school ceremony graduation, just seeing all the seniors just uh, walk down the aisle and just, accepting their high school diploma or different degree, associate degree, military, or anything with their heart desire, just, just to have insurance that we have the future generation of the seniors. They're the future of tomorrow. And, and also, the, uh, I got a chance to talk to Ramon Garcia. He's a senior from, uh, recently graduated from McAllen High School. So I don't know, you know, Dolly, I told that a testimony of Ramon Garcia. You can get, get a chance to read it on my Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen it. Well, it's on my Facebook page. If name Ramon Garcia. He used to play football for McAllen High School. And I like that number he was wearing, number 33. That was the age that I was last year. I was 33 years old in that fall, in that football season. And I want to give you guys a, a calendar for the month of June. I, I, am, I am going to take a break, uh, three weeks, because usually, usually like once a year, I take like a three week off. So I can just uh, rejuvenate, you know, just to, you know, to spend time with the Lord and just to relax and just to listen, to receive. And, you know, it's always good just to unwind a little bit as well. And here is the calendar we have. On June 16, we're going to have a testimony from Sophia, she's going to be a junior at Nicola High School. I know she's on fire for the Lord. I know she goes to do like family church as well. I've seen her at the youth group. Then we have June 23rd, we're going to have Jed. They're going to be sharing the word as well. And we're going to, we, we do have a new podium. Thank you, Jesus. We got a new podium. Thank you for donation from Angel Gutierrez from Brownsville, Texas, for donating the podium. So we're always blessed what the Lord is doing, and on June 30th, and I want to talk to your family, Adali, I'd like to invite you and your brother and your family, because we're going to have a, a guest speaker from uh, from the Philippines. Uh, his name is Lee Asia. Well, he'll be sharing wow. on June 30th, and I want to see how I talk to your mom. I don't know if you guys have any plans on June 30th. June 30th? On a Sunday. I'm not sure, brother. Okay, then I'll send a message to your mom. And so that's going to be our, our, our calendar for June. Now, we are going to continue our Bible series. We're going to go into Genesis chapter 6. We're going to be learning about Noah and the ark. It's always been one of my favorite stories about Noah and the ark. One of my favorite stories, even for so many years, I like how in the Bible says in Genesis chapter 8, when, when Noah had two birds, he let go of a raven. And then the raven never came back. He let go of a dove, and then and the dove came back with an olive leaf on his beak. So that's going to be something we're going to be talking about in uh, in July. The whole month of July, we're going to be going into chapter, chapter, like we did with Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3. And I know we, we I know Genesis chapter 4, talking about Cain and Abel, when they gave an, I mean, did an offering, and then Cain killed Abel because Cain was jealous. Because God likes Abel offering, and then Genesis chapter five, I talk about the generosity. How you say the word gener, generosity, generosity, and there's a story about Enoch. 
Enoch walked with the Lord for 300 years. He got raptured as well. But maybe what we're doing, if we're doing portion of the story, because after we finish the North Ark in September, we're going to cover the testing of Abraham. We're going to learn about Abraham's story, then Jacob, then Joseph, then we move into the burning bush about Ephesus. Moses in the burning bush, and you remember in Ephesus chapter 2, how uh, they put Moses in the, in the Nile River and have a baby in a basket, and then they all will continue from there. And then the Israelites, they, they walk in the desert, and then Joshua, uh, he, he walked in the battle of Jericho, and then of course he took the, the Israelites to the promised land. And we're going to continue from there to the minor prophet, and we are, we are going to go into the book of Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Psalms of Solomon as well. But we're looking, let's just start slowly with doing baby steps as well. So today uh, we're going to continue our sermon series on living in peace. And we're going to go on part two. And I titled this message, Restoring Your Peace. Everybody says restoring your peace. And I, I just feel that we don't have peace no more in this generation. Everybody's so angry. Everybody's so rude or disrespectful. Everybody just seems so... It's just no more accountability. There's just no more that a lot of people that just live life, you know, just themselves, you know. There's no evidence of the fruit of the Spirit. It's just we need to bring back peace. And I know as a Christian that we desire peace. We desire to walk in peace. And it's hard. I know there's so much in the world, you know, so much battles and temptation and losing that spiritual desire, finding that peace. In the Lord, so we're going to jump into five keynotes how to restore your peace, restoring your peace. And uh, let me give you an opportunity to pull out my my sermon library as well. Now, if I can find it here. Now, let's go to introduction of scripture. So, the main thing we're going to talk about is God is peace. Now, let's go on our first scripture, Psalm 29, verse 11. Now you hear that very carefully. The Lord will give strength to his people and he will bless his people with peace. What it means that I do, when I desire my own life and even when I when I get married as well with my wife and I will share this with my wife, we want to this marriage to be based on the foundation of peace. Maybe a lot of times that we, we, we live in peace to, to share peace because when we live your life with peace and practice with peace, and people will notice that you're a peaceful, quiet person, not somebody that gets angry or frustrated or, or get mad, because we need to learn to, to control, see that that's part of the fruit of the spirit, is to have self-control. And if you go to Galatians, they talk about that uh, if you walk in the flesh of death, if you walk in the spirit of life, and I myself learning to walk more in the spirit to, to be a good example or a leader, even to the younger generation, adult age as well. So remember that the Lord blesses people with peace and to bless them with strength, to give us our strength to help us as well. And let's go ahead and let's go to Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 15. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and every way. The Lord be with you all. Awesome. And let's go to our, our next scripture. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and in spiritual songs with grace to your heart to the Lord. And I want to just share that scripture very quickly because the Bible is the only book where you can receive and restore your peace. Because if you know that when you read the Bible, you see proof and evidence that you can, you can feel God's presence because remember, the author is always there present when you read the Bible. 
with no other book in the world but the author of only present when you restore that peace in your heart so remember this because when you grow in, in, in the lord and, and spend time in prayer and even in worship and then you allow yourself to get connected to god's word and to to grow that peace in his heart as well so for always remember to to practice and to go and use these scriptures as your keynote a tool to allow you to to grow in the wisdom and the, the understanding what god has for you as well so let have cover five key notes point number one give your burdens to god you uh, your creator let's go psalm chapter 55 verse 22. Yes. Cast your burden to the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Remember that to cast your burden to the Lord. Remember this in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Come to me all those are weary. Heavy burden and I'll give you rest. Uh, do you receive that rest? Do you receive that peace? And yes, and I hear stories of testimony out here in uh, a woman shared testimony that she was in prison for many, many years. She said in prison, there's no peace in prison because there's a lot of drama, there's a lot of chaos, there's a lot of fights. And man, when she got home, she felt peace. And it's always good to have peace in your home. Have a quiet uh, sanctuary to the Lord. When you allow yourself to, to, to grow in peace, and I believe that peace is going to penetrate in your heart now dolly i, I want to encourage you with this i know you're very young right now i know you have a desire to have a future husband right yes always remember this you need to have a husband that have a fear of the lord that, that walk with jesus he also have peace as well because you do need to have peace in your marriage right yes because see a lot of times with young girls and guys because Dating today culture is so much different compared to 20 years ago because of social media, technology. Have you heard about this word about ghosting you? Yes. Uh, uh, we, we didn't have that 20 years ago. I don't know where that comes from. You know when you send a text message to somebody, you know, like, and they like, they ignore you. I'm like, uh, uh, I heard this saying though, when guys, you know, if, if, you, if you message a girl, she just ghosting you, that means she's not interested. Uh, I'm like, man, I wish we could go back to the to the pay phones. So that would be so much easier though. And this is why anxiety sets in. That's why when you get all, you know, worry, anxiety, you start calling her or him like five, ten times, like, how come you're not texting me? How come you're not responding to my phone call? And and that's what really rob of your joy and your peace. And this is why we, we, we need to have a foundation to 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 be grounded in peace, to not let anybody steal the, the peace and the joy what the Lord has in your heart. So remember this, that to cast all your burdens to the Lord and for, allow God to take care of you. So Peter 5, 7, say, cast all your care upon him for he cares about you. And let's go to point number two. It says, in the midst of, uh, uh, um, um, uh, excuse me, in the midst of, of your circumstances, Turn your heart to Jesus. Turn your heart to Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrew chapter twelve verse two, if you set your if you set your, your eyes upon Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, John chapter nine verse five, that as long as I'm the world, I am a light of the world. And I want to share the story. Last night at four in the morning, um over my bedroom. Now my bedroom was really dark and I was just, I couldn't sleep because I had to get ready to send Bible scripture. And there, in, in, in my, uh, I have a door in my in my bedroom that leads outside to the patio. And there was a bright light. I don't know if it's like a flashlight, a very, like a long, like a Mary Terry light shining to my, my door. And I kind of wondered, what is that? And I kind of investigated, I was, I was looking outside and uh, I saw an angel or something and then I talked to my mom, okay, but my mom, oh no, don't worry, there's like a security guard that comes to the apartment at once, at twice a month, 
uh, okay, I thought that uh, maybe if, if, I'm, if, I'm, if someone's like shining like a flashlight into my door, outside door, uh, bedroom, and that kind of surprised me though, but uh, you know, I'm gonna pray for the Lord that we have security here in our apartment as well. Now, point number three, sometimes life may seem difficult and full of struggles, but God is always working in your life. And let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. But now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who was... You say, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is someone who will guide you, or will help you making decisions, help you to gain that peace. Because, now remember about sin. The Bible says in Romans 6.23 that the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God into our life. So if we live with sin, if we continue to sin, God, God's presence is not there for sin. If, if you allow yourself to, to, to walk in the flesh, you're not going to have peace in the Lord. Because uh, to remember that our heart desires Jesus, we desire to walk in the Spirit as well. And let's go ahead and continue reading. Remember, you are set apart for God's greater purpose for your life that you were created on purpose and for a purpose. Number four, point number four, always set your mind on peace. Let's go Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Finally, brethren, Pharaoh, become complete. Be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Now remember this, comfort one another. Live in peace. God is peace. He's always an author of peace. And for many years, I, I myself battle with a lot of anxiety. I battle a lot of, you know, having questions about life. But yet, when I found Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and, and, and you know, just knowing that when I found Jesus, it just seems like life has a purpose. Life has so much meaning now when I follow Jesus. Now remember this, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, that our citizenship does not belong here. It belongs in, in heaven. This, this world is temporary. We can die at any time. But if you have peace, if you have Jesus, believe that your name written in the Lamb Book of Life, then you'll be saved. Remember this scripture in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe that God raised from the dead, and you are saved. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God, who demonstrated his great love towards us, we were all sinners, and then Christ died for us. That's why uh, uh, we believers and Jesus, we need to continue to follow Jesus. Now, I saw the video on Instagram, and I saw this guy, he, he walked all over, I guess, a plaza. He was asking like 20, 30 people, asking him, hey, you believe in Jesus? And my first part, everybody ignored this guy. They said, no, I don't believe in Jesus. No, 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 I'm an atheist, or I'm, I'm a Gnostic. No, I don't. And it, it surprised me though, man, you know, you can't, you can't believe that. So many people don't even know the Bible. So many people don't even know about Jesus. There's another man. Uh, I think his name is, is, is Tolkien. To, to, um, he was he was very popular on on, on on his social media. He he goes around quizzing people about the Bible. Hey, I'll give you a, uh, I'll give you a hundred dollars if I can give you free questions about the Bible. And my reply, no one doesn't know the Bible. People don't know the Bible. So this is why I started a new ministry, Adali. Every month. I, I buy two Bibles and I give to do two different people as well as my gift to share the gospel of Jesus. If something new, I'm doing a ministry by buying Bible to help people with the word. I remember I, I gave a Bible to Debrina Garcia. So she came and, and, and I messaged her, uh, Fidel, how did, how did Debrina like the Bible? Here? And Fidel said, oh, she loved the Bible. So I, I guess it's something that we, if we follow for Jesus, we need to, 
find way to bring God's word, to bring, to give peace to a lot of people. And do you have anything you want to share about this, your point, my darling? It's, it's really nice knowing that, like, God is always with us. And, like, obviously, we have the Holy Spirit that, he, that was given to us by Him. So, it's always, we we'll always have to live according to it. Hey, Amen. Man, we got to know, man, uh, Adali's going to be a, a future national speaker. <laughs> now, let's go to point number five. It says, always call upon God to give you peace. And let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Uh, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you are also caught in one body and be thankful. Yes. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. And I believe if we continue to you know, to practice and to grow and we can we can live with with, with, with God's peace. I, I found out uh of watching this young girl I don't know on, on, on Instagram and she did a, a survey how she she dedicated her time reading the Bible and she saw changes in her life when she was reading the Bible maybe like four hours a day and then three hours a night and she would continue growing and she saw that the Bible really transformed her mind now remember the big Bible scripture Romans chapter 12 verse 2 do not conform to the pattern of the world and be transformed by the renewing of your mind because Jesus can, can change your heart even if you're a man that's bitter if you're a man that's angry or you're a man that just lost you know motivation in, in life but knowing that Jesus can change a, a hard heart and change it to a, a heart of the spirit to, to give you that peace as well and look go ahead with our um, chapter about learning um learning to grow in peace always growing in peace let's go um for peter chapter 3 verse 11. let him turn away from evil and do good let him seek peace and pursue it amen always turn away from evil when you become new in, in jesus when you get baptized by the Holy Spirit and you become a new creation, now, now, everything in life is a process. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to sin. But remember, we were saved by God's grace. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, we were saved by God's grace. But, but because of Jesus, we, we have redemption. Because of Jesus, we can, have, we can get connected, have boldness and confidence to go to him in the throne. I remember the story in Acts chapter 7. There was a man named Stephen. Now Stephen was get, getting persecuted. Uh, I think Saul was going to kill Stephen. And I saw that Stephen looked up to the heaven and he saw Jesus. Now remember and, and, and throughout the scripture, you always see Jesus sitting in the right hand of a father. For the first time, Jesus was standing and saw Stephen's face. And man, that really encouraged me because Stephen uh, I believe what was, was a man of, of, of courageous faith to go through that what was, was Saul but what was killing all the Christian but Stephen had faith and Jesus as well and let's go to our closing scripture Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God now I want to encourage you Adali uh, something you can practice <laughs> in the summertime and I know you're gonna be 11th grade this year but be a peacemaker you know be the light in the darkness and be somebody you know, I know the school district is very bad right now right yes it really is yeah I'm a kind of pride though even you go to an idea school it's still bad mm -hmm. and it's not like that at 20 years ago so it's a lot different now but now we, we need Jesus more than ever we need to we need to share Jesus not through our our, our words but through our action and I, I hope you guys really in, uh, blessed by this message I hope I really give you some tools to help you to practice to live with Jesus and a daughter any comment about this message no I think that's it 
wrong, but I mean, it was very nice. It was straight to a point, and like, just a few characteristics that we should apply to our lives. Hey, man, I am looking forward to see you Saturday. Uh, will you be interested to share your testimony? No, brother. Okay, we'll be a lot of people sharing about the testimony about the test ministry, Sophia as well, and I don't know if it will be a few other people, Michaela, Gabea, but well, um, let's go ahead and close in prayer, and I'll, I'll be preaching again on July 7th. We're going to do a new series called Noah's Ark. We're going to talk about Genesis chapter 6, and 7, 8, and 9. Remember the story about the rainbow and how God made a covenant to, to Noah? Yes. Yeah, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Every time I see a rainbow, I don't want to get a thunderstorm or a rain, and you always see that rainbow. And, uh, you know, sometimes I wish I could touch that rainbow. I wonder how, how it feels like to touch that rainbow. Awesome. And let's go ahead and go into the word of prayer. And thank you, Dolly. I hope you're enjoying your early summer vacation. Yes. Awesome. And just a reminder that an uh, event for at my home church is going to be a dress up event. But you can still just dress nice. Also, let's go ahead and go into the word of prayer. My loving Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your word, and thank you, Lord, for your wisdom to guide us, and as we continue to grow in peace, Father, we pray for our upcoming speakers, uh, Sophia, Jed, and Lee, as they get ready to prepare their message as well. And thank you, Father, for Dolly's life and the Luna family, as they continue to help me throughout the year. And, and thank you, Lord, for I ask you to continue to be there for Dolly when she makes decisions to give her wisdom and, and understanding as she gets ready to enter her junior year, 11th grade. And it's just my favorite number because I was born December 11th. Well, thank you, Jesus. I declare in Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Well, thank you, Dolly. I, I, if you could come by early on Saturday. Uh, maybe around six thirty, and then we'll, we'll 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 get you we'll get you seated. Okay, brother, sounds good. All right, well, I'll talk to you soon, then. You take care, and God bless you. Likewise, brother, you take care. Right. Bye. Amen. Well, God bless you, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into our online service. Are we grow and be faithful to the Lord? We've been at this church ministry for four years, and just. You know, it's always uh, an honor to, to present you God's Word and to grow in, in God's Word as well. So have a good evening, everybody. Thank you for your time and take care.